It captures everything, the eyes, the gaze, the engagement. It's a single value, whether it's vertical or horizontal. It's a dance that happens. Capture who they are, their confidence and their strength. That's a chronicle of our time. The, the analog, the chemical, the mechanical is a, is, is a common thread that's surviving time. The way we organize the show is to follow a chronological narrative. It starts with the first gallery, which is the first part of my work, which has been really portrait photography. That was my first 10, 15 years of working. I've been taking pictures since I'm a child. My father gave me a camera really young. I did a lot of internships at photo labs. I was taught by Joseph Kudelka, the photographer taught me black and white printing. Then I really got into my own craft, which was art direction, graphic design. Uh, working very, very early, uh, very early on, went to Parsons and then kept on the, the, the photography as a secondary medium. As a creative image maker, you're taught to use typography, design, packaging, all these different things, including photography, film, editing. I started a magazine because I've always been fascinated with publishing, and one of the, the main magazines was Self Service, which I started in 1994. It was about celebrating the fashion industry and all the creative industries around the fashion. And I started meeting and interviewing a lot of creative, amazing people. And that's when I decided, well, I need to document it one way. And that's why I decided in choosing the Polaroid camera. It's a very specific camera and it's important because it's, it's, it's the signature of all my work. Even through here, it's called the LAN camera. And the LAN camera has a very particular thing is that it has a fixed focus, meaning you can, it's meant to really document. You can't go closer or backwards. That's why you always see, see the same proportions and values in, my, in, in all the pictures, in the, whether it's portraits or these large ones. It's a single value, whether it's vertical or horizontal. It's, it, it, um, it requires a little bit of mastering. It has really strong flash cubes. It has a diffuser. It, uh, so it gives us a beautiful glow. And, and when I master it, it gives also, when I place the person to a certain distance of the wall, a really beautiful shadow that's really crisp. And that's my aesthetic. There's also that, that an aesthetic that I always love that you kind of see in the more fashion pictures, but also in the portraitures because it gives a beautiful, beautiful glow, glow but it's also very raw. So I decided to, to shoot only on white backgrounds. I wanted to strip away uh, any artificial distraction, really about the character. There's no, there's no distraction, there's no context. So you really talk about, about, about the person. My, my thing is about capturing the inner soul and beauty of people. So I started shooting and I, probably up to today, we have about 4,000 por portraits. And it ranges to a wide variety of people. Obviously, I would say 50% is the fashion industry, which I've covered extensively. And I probably have the biggest archive of, uh, of uh, 25 years of people. So it's not only designers, it's the people in front, behind the scene, expands to CEOs, it expands to fragrance noses. And then we talk, then the art world, you have artists, gallerists, curators, journalists. Uh, it goes from TEDx, uh, the people from TEDx, from big econ economists. So there are a lot of different kind of creative minds. And that's what I love is juxtaposing and combining all these different kind of, uh, as an example, there you have Louise Bourgeois and Kanye West. That's a chronicle of our time. The way those things happen, they're fun. I mean, they're, um, is we did a lot of different sessions. Sometimes there were group sessions. Uh, I would be like, once I was, Hans Ulrich invited me to uh, Art Basel. I can't remember which edition as an artist and I had a photo booth, so that was my art. So, And then I get to immerse myself and get all these extremely different uh, people from that community. I would, Jay-Z would invite me to a concert and I would set up my, my, my setup in the, in the middle of a stadium, and then I would capture the, all those kind of people, the DJs, the sound energies. And then we also started to focus on, on different cities and different, you know, the, the main cultural hubs in different cities. What tie all these people that I'm interested in capturing is their uh, creative integrity and their, their drive and their desire to push things forward. And there are obviously some exceptions which you're standing in front of where it was more about like, you know, I'm not saying that she's pushing the world uh, forward, uh, Kendall Jenner, but I just think that's also a little bit of social documentation of our times. I think the process as important as the result of my work. What I do is I create always a space, maybe not bigger than this, that's extremely cozy with a rug. We have a ritual, we have a table, we have a nappe blanche, we have the diptych candles, everything's set up. We have a little bit of music, we have flowers. 
and these people come into the space and my first job is try to make that person and engage in the conversation and make that person lâcher uh, prise just to, to, to let go sometimes you're dealing with people that have celebrities that know their image and they you know they'll come in they'll, they'll give you the thing that they used to giving to to on press shoots and stuff like that so it's about you know breaking that and we both have to feel in, in, in secure and confident if I'm insecure that person's insecure the picture the Polaroid is very 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 raw it captures everything if someone's not feeling it they'll capture so it's really um, I think that that part of the, the, the process is fundamental and as a portrait photographer you have a huge responsibility I'm there to capture who they are their confidence and their strength it seems very simple to do but it's not that simple at all just because you know it, I think Everyone has an angle, so it's really about a, a, a subtle dance and, and, and play of, I have the person slightly move, sometimes you have chairs, you know, to create body positions. Don't forget, I'm in a very restricted frame. So 4,000 portraits within the same frame, you have to always find, you know, maybe that person has a profile. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dance that happens and, and I'm very specific and then it captures. And then it's a collaborative. I never leave someone, uh, I never publish or edit, we never edit a picture where that person is not satisfied. And trust me, it's been, uh, people have been always extremely, extremely, you know, uh, happy by the process. And then after that, that just developed and began. And now, now we're approached all the time for portraiture and stuff like that. So we're also working now on finding a, a, creating a camera that would be digital, but with the same kind of light to be able to pursue that if Polaroid disappears, to have the same kind of restrictions. And um, you could do it there. So, uh, voilà. So, I said, so that's, that's what you see in the first gallery. During that time, then uh, I started also being very interested also in shooting some fashion. I mean, I'm, I live, uh, but always the kind of fashion I do is always, once again, character driven. During the, all these processes, every time we saw things that were inspiring, you know, accidents, emulsions, obviously we would edit out. We'd always keep them there. I was always fascinated. I thought it was so beautiful. Like, you know, this, 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 all the imperfections. And we'd always carefully, you know, never publish them, but always keep them there. A couple of years ago, we started doing some test prints, enlarging, and there was something quite beautiful. And we never, and then when the opportunity of this gallery came, uh, of doing this show together, that's where we said, okay, well, this is the time that's to, to, to initiate a new body of work, which is kind of a revisit of, of some of the unedited or, 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 or pictures but to blow them out of proportion. We kept, you know, we kept it as pure as, as possible. And once again, embracing, you know, all the, the, the analog aspect of it. And that's where I like, to, I love this picture just because it's something when you see it's so big, it's very painterly and these layers of, uh, of emulsions or the Karl Lagerfeld one, for instance, was a, an, an accident we did on set where I opened the whole right too, too suddenly and then I stuck it back together to, and then obviously it was not stuck together and, and then created that accident. So yes, and not all Polaroids work that way in large. There is more, we can walk, there is a little bit more fashion in, in, the, in this gallery. I personally love this picture just because also it's just the composition of it and that line that comes and it's burnt and, and that blurriness is the kind of things that could, we could never redo. So it's really about embracing it. We also framed them and printed them with that Polaroid border. So it's also a, a homage to Polaroid. Uh, that's why we decided to frame them with, uh, you know, as f in, in a floating manner. You must see, I have an obsession with 70s, that kind of imagery where, you know, women are powered and, and emancipated. She's so confident, you, you, she doesn't need any, 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 anything to show her inner elegance or inner class and sophistication. Another thing you'll see in most of my Polaroids portraits of fashion is for me, the eyes, the gaze, the engagement is, is very, very important. Then these are examples that are more to show how, you know, I then evolved to, to document my subjects, sometimes with diptychs, sometimes four together, sometimes collages. Tremendously restrictive uh, tech, technology I had. I had to then really be as creative as possible to expand it, explore it, and and have fun. And it's kind of like, a, you know, it's as if an, an artist has only worked with a with a crayon bico paper. Or we love th this wall as an idea because it also reflects the, the contrast of cultures. Kanye West uh, and uh, Louise Bourgeois. She is a legend, but there's also something extremely. Um, 
graceful, emotional that character. You know, these are the kind of magic accidents that happen in emulsion. You don't know why. I, I, I personally love those pictures, and I don't. She looked very punkish. There's something like really raw, and the gaze of those two girls. That picture is more aesthetical. I think it's more. But that's really, I would say, pure fashion photography. But once again, this kind of stuff is something I personally, you know, I, I, I just love. And when you see that, I mean, I've always seen that. I was obsessed with that. And I want to see that in, in large. And I think those give something quite, uh, give something quite u unique. This triptych, it's the first time we, we cut out the Polaroid borders and we started doing overlays. I always did the overlays like that with Polaroid borders. This one, we tried to just, to just break it. And... Uh, uh, well, it's my helmet, Newton. These are just a selection. It was just more, to, I, I felt the need to bring into this gallery some portraiture. These are some of the most iconic of their times. Some are existing, some have passed away. A lot of them are friends or people I've worked with. Well, I think it's quite nice to see all of these talents together as, as a group. That's what makes it strong too. So. Those two, to be, they're the only ones that are not Polaroids. They're digital pictures. They were done in the style of my Polaroid lighting, but we just thought they were important, because especially in the era of digital, the, the analog, the chemical, the mechanical is a, is, is a common thread that's surviving time. Mm -hmm.